When people die, they just go away. If there's any place a soul would go, it's in your memories. Another week, and yet another wave of BC titles are released onto Xbox One via Microsoft's ongoing and expanding range. This week we have some dirt track racing with ATX linked below and on screen, and Microsoft's own take on the grand Japanese RPG model with Lost Odyssey covered here. Now this was a huge investment for the Big M back in 2008 when it partnered with Miss Walker to create this magnificent 360 exclusive. This consistent third party relationship has always been within the Xbox plan and is likely to continue if not increase even more with Phil Spencer's new vision of the brand. It was and still is a beautiful title and really has the grandeur of a Final Fantasy game, complete with its very own Man With No Name hero. You are immediately left with no doubt on just how hard, cool and downright stylish he is. When introduced into a battlefield swamp with soldiers more heavily suited than a quarterback, our protagonist charges in wearing something more suited to a dance-off, laying way to sword swipes and slow motion dodges that would fit well into Jet Li's arsenal. It is a standard turn-based affair across both fixed and random battles as you explore the barren wasteland, trying to dissolve the thousand-year sadness which all others are in awe of your immortal self, who is immune to death, smiling and bad hair days it seems. It's all a complete win-win. Sadly this is not the case and you embark on your adventure that carries the standard history or magical skills and carelessly discarded but incredibly powerful trinkets to expand your repertoire. Voice acting, my preferred Japanese anyway, is solid and powerful. Even for a guy Shing like myself, it is the way to experience any true Japanese title. Hey, you're that guy, right? The soldier that can't die! The soldier that can't die! Visually, it is the exact same title we have to enjoy, which includes the native 720p resolution mask with an FXAA pass, but although it helps clean up the image, it can leave large segments of jaggies. These come from both geometric edges, of which the game city and rock formations are abundant, along with thin sections, specular highlights, and even textured areas in places, all far from ruining the display, but it certainly is starting to look its age in that regard. It has that familiar texture look with varying levels of clarity and singular colours, a very brown and grey colour palette at times, all typical of its Unreal 3 powered base a popular engine across this generation of titles. Model quality is rather high and for such an old title, hair in the game is much better than the standards of the time with larger animated geometry fins with a fair level of movement in-game and real-time cinematics. In fact, character clothing and physics on cloth as you move and play from yourself and other characters is actually quite impressive for a title of this age being a 2008 exclusive. You can obviously appreciate this movement and animation much better in the real-time cinematics, along with the pre-rendered ones. We should also get a nod, as the mixture between pre-rendered and real-time is very well handled, and though the gulf in quality is instantly evident, the game's intro is as impressive and engaging now as it seamlessly flows from its epic start to your own control. These blends are used at various points throughout the title with equal success. The game uses a strong mix of depth calculated doff, which give a sense of scale to scenes and at times an almost action figure look. This is used in gameplay and cutscenes to good effect and also assists the image quality further. Strong use of billboard lighting, bloom, all complement the package and its 30Hz rates, which would have benefited further with some motion blur outside of the emphasised drama style used in the turn based attack sequences. The largest downside of the image quality is the heavily dithered shadows in both cutscenes and gameplay, along with lacking any filtering at all at certain points. There are also some linear corrected lighting issues with the game, but overall, these are minor blemishes on an attractive title, even to this day. Music is again of the same high standard, with a title screen score very reminiscent of Sega's own Panzer Dragoon soundtrack, along with a familiar Final Fantasy tone unsurprising from the very same composer. It always complements the action and cinematics well with its orchestral productions. So what about performance then? Well, as you can see from the on-screen metrics, this is again a title that employs an adaptive V-Sync on the 360, allowing the old partial frame to be blended with the new one at regular points. Now, this is not confined to the top section of the screen and can tear anywhere within the Y-axis of the screen, as the higher section from the old frame is displayed over the newer frame beneath. 
Now this is, as always, completely removed from the BC Xbox One emulated version that covers around 22 gig download from the store to cover the whopping 4 disc beast. This at present can only be played from the physical disc with no store release as yet. Opening up the forthcoming Blue Dragon from the same team and Mass Effect titles that are sure to hit sooner or later. So with tearing now resolved on the Xbox One, here tested on my Xbox One S machine, do we see any other benefits of performance from the original hardware? Yes we do, and they are quite substantial. If not 100% solid, they are not far from it now. Along with the tearing, the 360 version can also drop frames much more in the GPU bound cutscenes that can see the frame rates fall into the 50 millisecond mark for locked 20 FPS output on my real time graph. In these identical sections on the Xbox One S, we see a flat 33.33 milliseconds delivered with a stable image and a flat 30 hertz that can be felt without the need of a graph. Now, normally this is not the most important part, but the game has hours of these. So it's actually a huge upgrade to the title along with the action, attack and exploration sections. We now have a much more pleasant and stable title in the BC that is being delivered free of charge without the need to dish out your old hardware. After a simple download and disk based DRM control, you now have the complete 360 Epic on your new machine complete with much better performance, no tearing and in short, the best way to relive or dive into this monster RPG for the first or fifth time. After the early start and wobbles with some titles from the BC launch catalogue, the team have done, as I stated at the time, managed to refine and improve their emulator JIT application to a level that is delivering identical, or even in this case, and other titles, far superior performance on chalk and cheese hardware is both a commendable achievement to the engineers involved and Microsoft for giving them the time and budget to achieve this. This is becoming one of the strongest segments of the Xbox key features and I am sure the forthcoming Scorpio next year will not only fall into this perfectly, but will offer up even greater and tangible benefits over what is being accomplished here with its older and weaker brother. It may not be at the level of Square's magnificent Final Fantasy series, but it stands tall and proud amongst the RPG greats and is another win for the BC squad, delivering a knockout blow to its ever-expanding catalogue. Now as always, I hope you guys and girls enjoyed this and if you did and you really want to support my channel and keep me independent and thriving, then please hit the like and subscribe, it really helps me immensely and I appreciate each and every one of you that does. Leave all your thoughts and feedback below, I reply as often as possible as you know and you all take care, game fast, play hard and I'll see you on the next one.